Thank you everyone for subscribing to Infinitely Productions. If it is you have not done so, please click the bell and subscribe and we hope you enjoy our content. A rat in the eyes of the mob and he certainly helped the federal government in its fight against the mob. Joe Valachi's testimony. He worked for years as a foot soldier in the New York Mafia. Joe Valachi always wanted to be a big shot. He couldn't get it any other way except by crime. Joe might have had a big gun, but he wasn't one. Then he revealed its secrets to the nation. No one violated the oath of silence, Omerta, until Falaci in 1963. He was certainly a rat in the eyes of the mob, and he certainly helped the federal government in its fight against the mob. Joe Valachi's testimony led to the basic destruction of organized crime, the mob. Today, made men, pinky rings, and an oath of secrecy called omerta seem as American as apple pie. Their stories populate respected television shows, bestsellers, and award-winning movies. And it's not just fiction. The exploits of real-life mobsters like John Gotti and Sammy the Bull Gravano are legend. But it wasn't always that way. There is nothing mysterious about the manner in which the Federal Bureau of Investigation works. Its formula is a simple... At one point, J. Edgar Hoover, the top law enforcement agent in the country, didn't even acknowledge that the Mafia existed. A lowly mob soldier from East Harlem changed all that. This here, what I'm telling you, what I'm exposing to you and the press and everybody, this is my doom. Joe Valachi decided to come out of the cold and come into the light and destroy what he had been a party of. And that decision was the most momentous decision in his life, and it was the most momentous decision in the history of the mob. To what? Destroy them. Destroy who? The Cosa leaders, or the bosses, the whole uh, thing that exists. You want to destroy the whole, uh, the whole syndicate, uh, the whole organization. The whole, that's right, yeah. According to Joe Valachi, this decision had its origin in a simple kiss. It's a summer day in 1962. At the federal prison in Atlanta, 57-year-old Joe Valachi has recently begun a 15-year stint for dealing drugs. Incarcerated with him is his godfather, Vito Genovese, head of one of New York's five mafia families. One day, according to Valachi, Genovese pulls him aside for a talk. The subject, loyalty. There were rumors at the time that uh, Joe had uh, become an informant, that he probably was snitching a bit and giving some information, if not about his gangster friends, about others that he knew uh, you know, in the drug business. Valachi developed a reputation, deserved or not, as somebody who could not be fully trusted. Within the organization, he was called Facci Due, which means two-faced. Valachi says that Genevieve speaks allegorically, warning that he needs to remove one bad apple from the barrel before it spoils the rest. Valachi assumes he is the bad apple. At that point, Rito Genovese wanted to embrace Joe, which was the way the mob itself would handle somebody that they were going to kill. Vito Genovese kissed them. The kiss of death. If Valachi wasn't feeling the heat already, the feds made sure he would. The Federal Bureau of Narcotics send two guys to the penitentiary every few weeks, and they call in Joe Valachi for a conversation. Now, Valachi is playing the Omega game to the hilt. No, I'm not saying nothing. Despite learning nothing from Valachi, the agents have left the impression that the mobster had turned. At the end of two hours, they've got absolutely nothing. He leaves. They've got everything. Why? 
prison grapevine. Prisoners began to talk about Joe's chummy relationship with federal agents. It was designed to get Joe Balacci into very serious trouble. That strategy may have worked. As the months dragged on, Balacci became increasingly fearful. He went to the authorities and requested to be put in solitary confinement. He ends up telling them, put me in the hole. Eventually, however, when he refuses to explain why he wants to be in a hole, they let him out and put him back in general population. On June 22, 1962, during a rare walk in the prison yard, a chain-smoking Valachi noticed several inmates following him, sent by Genovese, he thought, to kill him. Valachi picked up a lead pipe. He erupted, beating one of the inmates to death. Then Valachi realized that he'd mistaken a small-time hood with no mob ties for a rival gangster. Valachi has said a couple of times that he was embarrassed that he killed this guy who didn't deserve to be killed. He made a mistake. He didn't feel sorry that he killed the guy, but he was embarrassed that he made a mistake and killed the wrong guy. He was just sorry he didn't kill the right guy. When Valachi learned that he now faced the death penalty for the murder, he had a choice to make. Honor his oath to the family or save his skin. Valachi contacted U.S. Attorney Robert Morgenthau in New York City, using a go-between with mob ties. The U.S. Attorney arranged for Valachi's charges to be reduced to second-degree murder. The same day they sentenced him, the feds moved Valachi to New York's Westchester County Jail. There, the government would assign a veteran FBI agent named James Flynn to Valachi's case. Flynn had spent years compiling an extensive file on the mob. His first attempts to interrogate Valachi didn't go well. I could see that there was a definite hatred on Joe's part against anybody in law enforcement at that point. He would talk, he would not talk. He would recognize the fact that you were in the room and he stopped talking altogether. A week became two months. Flynn made little progress. I had had it up to here. <laughs> listening to him say the same thing over and over and over again. I began to find out after we started having our personal talks that he was a frightened, terrorized man. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more of our content. Feel free to give your feedback and suggestions on what we should do next in the comments. This is Infinite Lee Productions. We love ya.